this is not the first time this sort of thing has happened. It's not like they're looking for some brand new governmental agency or something to be created. Right. These sorts of steps already exist because these things have happened in the past. Mm -hmm. What's the deal with that? Are there, are there other things we need to know about from the past that uh, point to this? The big, yeah, the, the big one that uh, I remember even learning about in pharmacy school is uh, thalidomide. Okay. Um, so I've never heard of that. So thalidomide, um, was tech. Well, we can get into that, but thalidomide caused birth, birth defects, very severe birth defects. I assume that wasn't what they advertised it as. Correct. (laughs) Yes. And what was particularly, um, problematic was that is, is that it was used for kind of morning sickness, nausea in women. Oh, wow. Um, so pregnant women, obviously most likely to, to have that symptom. Yeah. Most effect you're trying to sell a drug bang for your buck, how it's marketed, et cetera. So then obviously that was, um, you know, devastating impact, um, late fifties, early sixties where this occurred, um, essentially it was shortening of limbs. Um, it was, you know, very serious physical, um, um, birth defects wow. with that. Um, so there are some layers to it. I mean, they, they estimate that 20,000 patients in the U S had taken this drug at that time. Um, but I think what's critical to understand, and again, this is not like to turn it into like defending the FDA is that it was not approved here. This is, you know, and again, there's multiple layers here, but it was an unregulated clinical trial um, that was kind of oh. funneled, you know, through because the drug was developed in Europe. Um, so the medication was used there. That's where most of the impact was seen. Um, obviously, any impact with something like this is dramatic. Um, but there are estimates that six to 17 patients were born, babies were born here um, with that birth defect. There were thousands born overseas. Wow. So. I believe it was a German drug that was developed. And then, um, yeah, so that this was obvious. This is the one that stands out in terms of also what it led to, um, which in a nutshell was that in 1962, um, regulations and power and authority of the FDA to um, screen for the safety of drug and also just public awareness of new drugs was um, yeah, there was an act. It was an amendment to the 1938, F, you know, Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, um, and that was again critical um, in the process of drug approval. That you know, we've keep improving, hopefully, as we go on today. So prior to that, safety wasn't really part of their purview in terms of drug analysis. Not to the not to the extent. Okay. They, they it, within the. Um, the amendment, they, they laid out more specific plans about how the drug will be approved and also marketed um, further. So yes, in, in a broad sense, safety, yes. But what do you do with that? If, yeah. if, if, if you're not told, if you're a drug company, you're not told you have to do X, Y, Z. I hate to say it, especially before a lot of these awful yeah. incidents occurred, yeah. you're, you're going to do kind of the minimum to get your drug to market and it works and it's fine and yeah, I mean, back. it worked in Europe. Why won't it work here? Right. Yeah. And and I think what was critical, too, is in that same amendment, um, pregnancy categories were created. So they could, you know, essentially categorize them by the effect on pregnant women and also the reproduction. You know, has it been shown to be effective, studied in pregnant women? Is it more ambiguous, somewhere in between? That's That was a critical um, outcome of this as well. So because of thalidomide, the FDA was able to have some stronger teeth in its enforcement uh, end of things. I seem to remember there being a thing in the, in the early aughts, um, Vioxx, uh, a pharmaceutical that, that came to market and then went away. And I don't remember exactly why. I just remember hearing it on the news all the time. What was that about? So it was just a, basically another NSAID like ibuprofen. Okay. Uh, that was marketed as a safer alternative to help with, pain, osteoarthritic, osteoarthritic pain, basically. And it was later found that it had an increased risk of cardiovascular disease in a pretty short amount of time um, after somebody was taking it. Oh, goodness. So it sparked a whole issue or sparked an entire cascade of legal issues, of course. Yeah. And um, 
you know, certainly left a lasting impact on, on this part of the industry is, is, is the correction of that also based out of some of the things that were learned from thalidomide? And, and is that kind of what we're using now with the singular debate? I would say sort of, you know, just more in relation to the, you know, um, the way clinical trials and such are structured now, it has, it has much more to do with that, you know, and just the rigor that's required to, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> make sure you're actually coming up with legitimate data. But I want to say that Merck was, they actually voluntarily pulled this from the market. Okay. So if they weren't going to do it, they, it was going to get pulled at some point, but they, <laughs> right. I believe they make it known that, yeah, we, we saw this starting to occur. We pulled it from the market. And, when did that hit the market? When did Vioxx come out? So that would have been late 90s, like, like 1998, 1999. So around the same time as Singulair. I guess, yeah. technically, yeah. Interestingly, yeah. Yeah. And, and these drugs um, are important in the sense that they are, um, I don't want to say new versions, but they're tweaked versions of NSAIDs that we commonly use, like ibuprofen and naproxen. Okay. So one major issue are, is um, with those types of meds are GI um, issues. Um, so you can have everything from, you know, just intention intestinal distress through GI bleeds. So it's because I don't want to get too in the weeds here, but, um, Cox one and Cox two Cox one's involved in platelet ag aggregation. Also the lining of your stomach, okay. um, ibuprofen and naproxen blocked Cox one and two, um, so they developed these drugs, Celebrex and Vioxx, uh, right around the same time. Celebrex was 98, Vioxx was 99, that only work on COX-2. So only work theoretically on the inflammatory pain. So it was meant as a, an improvement of these drugs. Sure, yeah. Um, and one thing in a broad sense of where, um, like Dante touched on some of the studies and the data that was gathered was, um, you know, the Merck developed Vioxx in response to these GI issues and these GI bleeds. So they studied, they studied wow. the drug compared to naproxen relative to GI bleeds. That's where the focus was other information, depending on how, on what your view is or how controversial you want to get was hidden or twisted. Yeah. And so again, that's, it was really the target. Mm -hmm. Like we kind of touched on with the singular, you know, whenever you're looking at this indication, this disease state, the medications used for that disease state, and you're in that world, sometimes you can miss what's over here. Yeah. And even though they kind of should have known, and there were definitely some indicators in the study, even from a mechanism standpoint, how this can occur, um, you know, how the cardiovascular events could have occurred, the target, the marketing, the money, the research was behind. Let's compare it to peptic ulcers, basically. Sure. Okay, man. But it does seem like we are learning as we go. And, and, and improving this process. I mean, this is, pharmacy is only in, in the modern sense, uh, what, a hundred years old? And, and there are major uh, safety precautions and steps and pathways put in to protect the consumer while also making sure that the industry is able to keep producing mm -hmm. these miraculous drugs that do incredible things. <laughs>